Good evening, everyone. I'm very glad to see you. I uh, think uh, we have this quite quick format today, so we have to uh, start right now. Uh, I'm going to turn off my video so that uh, so that it uh, doesn't distract anyone's attention. I also don't like uh, watching myself while speaking and uh, to make the channel uh, uh, unobstructed. Uh, I will turn the video off, but you will see the uh, slides of the presentation. You will hear all all the information and after the presentation uh, you will have the opportunity to ask questions we will uh, uh, have more information about uh, you and about you will get the information about myself and you can take notes so that uh, uh, you can ask something uh, i'm going to uh, simply give my talk right now without asking any questions so i'm going to close the video and now let's um, talk about the slides uh, do you see the slides by the way thank you so uh, our today's meeting is dedicated to bullying and uh, we are uh, going to hold this meeting uh, with a very simple approach we aren't going to go into complicated details we aren't going to talk about uh, hundreds of uh, types of bullying described uh, online in various sources we are going to go in the uh, root of this issue and we will try to understand how it affects our children and how this issue appears what are the preconditions for bullying and at the end of our meeting we will uh, find out uh, about three simple steps for each uh, parents i will explain you how to do that and you will be able to apply it in your uh, life uh, so that uh, your uh, child uh, is not affected by bullying is not witnessing the bullying uh, somewhere and so that that your child does not attack other uh, people, other children. It is important for our children not to witness this uh, around themselves. If there is a small group, let's say uh, a grade of school, if there, is, there are two, three children uh, who are completely immune to bullying, this will be enough to uh, support, to maintain this anti-bullying atmosphere in your group, irrespective of, of what's going on in the school or in the society in general. And you will find out more about it. I've received the questions before our meeting, and I'm going to show you uh, these uh, questions uh, uh, on the screen. So the question is how to teach uh, uh, the, uh, the child to resist if uh, he or she is bullied in class. Then how can we as parents teach our kids to deal with uh, bullies? How to prevent bullying uh, at school? Uh, let's talk about bullying at school. Uh, how to support parents if uh, the parents are worried about the child uh, that might become a bully uh, and uh, how to talk to the children how to correct the situation in the family or uh, how to support uh, the uh, parents who think their child is innocent, innocent although there is uh, evidence showing that the child is involved in a conflict situation if we look at these questions you can uh, we can see that these questions are quite detailed and as if they request an instruction steps to be taken to solve this problem and that's an error maybe let's uh, uh, put it in a different way even if you know the correct order of the uh, steps 
uh, how to um, protect your child from bullying, you won't be um, able to know how to do that correctly. Even if you know what to do, uh, it doesn't mean you will uh, know how to do that and you will be able to apply these measures correctly. Uh, so let's not talk about these specific questions. And you know, online, there are millions different pieces of advice. Let's instead try to understand the situation. What's going on in case in a situation of bullying? What happens to your child? So let's uh, use a systemic approach. Let's discuss what bullying is. I mean, uh, it's important to understand not only what to do, but how to do and why we should do that uh, so that we could not only uh, solve these issues, but to create a situation when this issue is impossible. Uh, I am an adept of a systemic approach, and that's what we are going to do. We have a straightforward plan of our today's meeting. Uh, first of all, I'm going to tell you shortly about myself. Uh, then I'm going to talk about uh, repercussions, consequences uh, for everyone involved in this situation, the bullying associated uh, situation. Uh, it's important to understand everything from A to Z uh, to protect uh, kids from bullying. Then uh, next we are going to talk what bullying actually means. That's not something that jumps right to, to, to the eyes, to the face. Uh, sometimes you can uh, see uh, different and hear different pieces of advice, but they don't help to solve the situation. Next we will talk about the situation at home, how it can provoke bullying, then how can bullying be provoked at school. Uh, then number six, uh, item six uh, i will give you a good example of uh, my daughter who prevents bullying and uh, is able to create uh, an atmosphere when uh, kids behave in a completely different way much friendlier i'll explain uh, how i succeeded uh, in teaching her to become an anti-bullying person uh, then uh, item eight is summary and at the very end i'm going to answer your questions so there are nine items nine parts of our presentation but it won't take much uh, time uh, about me what you need to know about me is that my name is alexey kastrov i have been uh, developing uh, uh, three week practical uh, courses, exercises for uh, people over 25 uh, years. Uh, and uh, it helps them uh, preventing any psychological problems so they don't have to uh, go to a therapy. I have been developing an educational system for more than seven years. This system takes into consideration uh, strengths, uh, uh, perception, peculiarities of uh, children, not only age uh, dependent, but depending on uh, each kid's personality. And I also uh, help to uh, help create uh, this uh, friendly atmosphere. This system differs from the system we uh, got used to when we attended school. So I uh, believe we should not uh, put different kids in the same conditions. Uh, all kids or all children, they are different. And uh, even if we want the children to reach the same goal, the way to this goal will be different for everyone. As I am involved in the educational system, I work with parents as well. And I do understand there is this problem, even if there is the, the very best school in the world. Uh, when a child returns home from this wonderful school and meets his parents unable to support him or her, then uh, kids will be disappointed. And if the school is much better than home, uh, then children will be disappointed. And I am against the situation when the educational system destroys families. So I also work with parents, enabling them to make an atmosphere which would be better than 
uh, this situation at school. Uh, I often uh, get such requests from uh, parents uh, asking how to get rid of guilt, of uh, some inner deficiency complexes or some uh, false dependencies. Uh, some suffer because of psychological traumas of making, which make them uh, behave as uh, children. Uh, if you want to solve these issues instead of uh, attending therapy for uh, three years, then uh, another alternative is to work uh, with me. For example, uh, I sometimes consult parents together with uh, children, with teenagers, uh, and help uh, these uh, teenagers understand their strengths. Uh, I help parents to find an uh, individual approach to their uh, children. If they have, uh, let's say, three children, uh, in case of two uh, older children, uh, certain methods worked, but it doesn't work for the younger child. So I also can help with that. Sometimes we have to discuss uh, some uh, psychological traumas, or uh, I have to explain uh, the parents that uh, their children are near puberty and this is the period when the authority of the parents let's put it that way diminishes uh, parents of course want to remove obstacles uh, for the child uh, while they are still uh, have this role of uh, authority and uh, sometimes uh, I work with uh, children with teenagers uh, in a, a quite a dire situation when there is a, an attempted suicide or a child suffered rape or rape or uh, children are terrified by the school environment by teachers by uh, neighbors uh, grandparents there are all kinds of situations in families uh, and in the society and when the uh, problem is urgent then parents come to me to solve these uh, tough uh, issues i uh, believe in prevention we aren't going to talk about the worst consequences of the of bullying i uh, did my best to remove uh, negative things uh, from uh, my presentation we are going to talk about positive things we are going to talk about prevention uh, as to uh, the uh, relations between me and bullying i am not a, uh, uh, someone who has only read about it i left home when I was uh, 13. I uh, was uh, quite gifted. I participated in school contests in mathematics, other subjects. Uh, I've seen uh, the uh, uh, social situation. Uh, it was the perestroika times in uh, uh, Russia and uh, these times they were rough. Uh, I have seen the underworld uh, and i've had this experience and i've been working with teenagers helping them in this same tough uh, situation i uh, first uh, faced bullying when i was five years old uh, and when I was five, I started protecting my neighbors. I had a neighbor, uh, a boy called Misha. He was seven years old. He was living on the, the uh, fourth floor, but uh, he suffered because of another neighbor uh, bully. Uh, and I tried to protect uh, this neighbor, Misha. Uh, I was regularly beaten, of course, but I uh, kept on. Uh, there was another uh, boy with large ears and uh, as you know when a child uh, has some physical peculiarity um, uh, it is uh, also uh, pos uh, there is also a possibility for bullying and i try to protect him as well uh, and uh, when uh, uh, he, this uh, boy with uh, large ears was invited to by someone, uh, then the host, uh, the, uh, the boy hosting uh, this uh, would, for example, urinate in his glass. Uh, of course, it's nothing funny. I tried to prevent it and I tried to protect him by from these uh, bullies. Uh, 
at uh, school I tried to uh, protect let's say the nerds uh, all the other children uh, ask them for help but they also bully uh, the nerds and one of my classmates his name was Evgeny he uh, committed suicide by hanging when he was 14 or 15 year old uh, everyone was surprised and uh, he actually hanged himself because of bullying not because of bullying at school uh, our school the school i attended was one of the best it is still the best at school but uh, the bullying he suffered from it was uh, in the neighborhood uh, so he suffered from his uh, friends in the neighborhood uh, unfortunately when bullying reaches uh, extremes and if we talk about a person who isn't a child who isn't very talkative uh, an introvert or discreet uh, child and then uh, bullying may uh, cause uh, suicide in these uh, uh, quiet children. Uh, I also faced bullying later on uh, when uh, I was one of the uh, informal authorities. There were five of, uh, of us uh, in our group. Uh, we didn't uh, attack each other, but uh, they tried to remove me from their group and they actually agreed with everyone at school to ignore me. This isn't bullying, but this is uh, the stage just before bullying starts. And it's important to see how children behave in this situation because it will show whether uh, they may suffer from bullying later on. Uh, I succeeded in this experiment. I kept my positions, uh, but uh, you know, children can't uh, keep uh, being angry for a long time. So the situation did re resolve itself. Uh, when a child uh, moves and uh, starts attending uh, to uh, starts attending a new uh, school and. Uh, he's in a new group uh, there are some uh, situations we, which cannot be classified as bullying but uh, we are going to talk about this situation because it may lead to bullying so we will talk what we need to uh, teach uh, the child uh, so that he or she can avoid being bullied. Uh, I lived in a town where uh, about 98% uh, of uh, people, they were let's say uh, uh, thugs or uh, um, hoodlums. Uh, I looked in a, like a different person. I dressed in a different way. I didn't wear a tracksuit all the time. That's why I was uh, attacked on a regular basis, at least a few times a month. Uh, they wanted to punish me for being different. And what I'd like to say, these provocations were somewhat positive because uh, if a child is in, in such a critical situation, uh, it will enable the child to become even braver and stronger if uh, he or she doesn't give up. So uh, bullying doesn't mean uh, completely negative things. Bullying may also lead to some benefits. Uh, all this experience made me stronger. And the reason was that uh, my uh, family was able to uh, teach me many, uh, some of these things I'm going to mention. Now let's talk about repercussion or consequences of the bullying. So what happens to the participants of bullying? There are four types of uh, participants, but uh, we are going to talk about the traditional ones. A victim and an aggressor. A victim uh, is easy to notice, so we feel for him or her and we want to help. So what usually happens to a child who becomes a victim? This child 
child starts uh, being afraid uh, to make any direct actions. It means that they start to uh, avoid a direct path as if they try to turn around uh, because they are afraid. Then the second consequences for the victim of bullying is psychological trauma. Of course, everyone has psychological traumas. We were all children, we all face different situations. But the problem with psychological traumas is that in certain situations, they make us behave like children. You may have noticed that uh, when something uh, seemingly unimportant happens uh, to adults, react as if they are uh, children, they um, may also behave uh, in a way uh, uh, that is not suitable for an adult. That's the uh, consequence of a uh, psychological trauma. Uh, then uh, another consequence is that this child victim of bullying becomes invisible or becomes dissident. An invisible person means uh, uh, no one pays attention to him or her, no one uh, except for his or her family, uh, notices uh, them, and he or she leaves nothing interesting behind. Uh, dissidents are people who oppose everything, even if you propose something positive. And the fourth consequence is that children, victims of bullying, they start missing opportunities. Not only uh, do they not look for opportunities, they also uh, ponder for a long time, they think for a long time about opportunities, as if they can't believe that, uh, like, uh, they are offered a, a cup of chocolate uh, when they visit someone and they expect to uh, it to contain uh, uh, feces or urines. You, you do get the uh, situation. And the fifth consequence is uh, being fearful of uh, intimacy, fear of uh, intimacy, being unable to open their heart. It's hard to uh, have close, close relations. They, uh, live as if they are orphans, they avoid uh, close relations and sometimes even become so sociopathic. So we can imagine uh, this uh, type of personality. Uh, victims are often uh, become marginal and they also suppress their leader qualities. If we talk about aggressors, Let's look at the main consequences for an aggressor. So the first one is that they are afraid of errors. And uh, the older a person is, the more he is afraid of criticism. And that hinders, it hinders uh, the development because you have to try and you have to make mistakes. You can't uh, find uh, ex-bullies among professionals because of the psychology of an aggressor. Uh, aggressors avoid development, self-development because of this fear of error. Another problem is uh, related to the fact that his close people are similar, so the similar social circle. If uh, we uh, look at uh, them, they uh, uh, the people, uh, close people, they are useful for uh, useless for each other because they know how to solve the same uh, problems, and it leads to a weak team. Uh, these people, they uh, normally become uh, uh, quite uh, unsuccessful because of all these factors. Uh, Another consequence is that uh, they are afraid of being themselves. They uh, strive to be like everyone else. And you will find out that uh, uh, bullies, they are afraid to be attacked. And uh, they want to be uh, like everyone else or they want to look strong. But in order to be strong, you need to know your strengths and you need to improve your strengths. And that's how you can become really strong. These people are not aware of their strengths. They don't want to find them out. They don't want to be, they want to look strong. Uh, the next consequence 
uh, they are friends uh, putting knives in the backs. They don't know how to make friends. They attract the same people. It's hard for them to find company. And if even if you move uh, with your child to another town, uh, then you will have to teach him how to make friends. And the fifth consequence of the aggressive behavior in the childhood is following the trend instead of creating it. People don't want to create new trends. People don't want to invent something they don't want to go against the society and it all mm, leads to a situation when they have to uh, maybe even steal money from parents from friends so that uh, they can afford something and it can be like everyone else around them so this is like a mass con consumer uh, uh, searching for trends uh, you know, getting uh, loans, uh, uh, having a tendency to uh, aggressive sex, they want to leave an impression, they try to leave an impression, trying is important, they don't know how to leave, they don't know how to organize teams and groups around themselves, they don't know how to support uh, close people, uh, they don't know how to make friends, how to select friends, so their life is actually a war, and there are also situations when a child that is attacked uh, becomes an aggressor later their own. An ex-victim becomes an aggressor. It doesn't happen always in 100% uh, percent of uh, cases, but uh, every fifth victim switches the roles, meaning that a former victim becomes an aggressor and it means he or she will have the same consequences for the victim and for the aggressor. I'm going to explain you how a person becomes an aggressor. If a person understands that he hurts the others, why he does that? We will find it out uh, later on. Uh, the former victims turned aggressors, they uh, uh, often, uh, unfortunately, are unable to see the problems. Uh, they blame everyone uh, except themselves. They can't see that they are the source of the problems in their own life. So it's hard for them to communicate, it's hard to develop, and uh, it's hard to talk to them and to communicate with them as well. So these are the consequences uh, for the main participants of uh, bullying. The main idea is that it's not important whether your child is a victim or an aggressor. If he participates in bullying, uh, it will result in negative consequences, a lot of them. Now let's talk about the gist, the essence or the core of bullying. What is the core of this behavior in the groups of children? Uh, children are not generally prone to aggression. There are some factors and there are some super, super facial uh, opinions of, of uh, most psychologists or people who are considering themselves as psychologists. Uh, they are unfortunately quite popular, well known, they write articles for magazines and then the society has some expectations about bullying. When we think about bullying, we often uh, ask these uh, particular questions, how to teach, how to explain, how to deal with bullying. Uh, so it requires to have a certain model of uh, thinking, uh, because you aren't asking how to choose an environment, bullying-free environment, or, or how to prevent uh, from uh, being attacked. No, we think what to do with the child, what is the child supposed to to do. So uh, I have been studying this uh, uh, phenomenon for a long time, but I can see that all these uh, advice, they are very superficial and they are unable to solve the problem. Uh, the bullies are considered right away as uh, uh, offenders, as criminals. Psychologists give advice how to uh, 
uh, save the victim, but unfortunately, the victim is the one responsible for bullying. If your child is uh, being attacked, in 90% of uh, cases, uh, he is the reason he is being attacked. We will talk more about it. So most of the information about bullying online is unfortunately fake, meaning that these, uh, these advice seem to be correct, but they don't work. The reason for bullying is shown on the screen. I'm going to explain it. So you can see the dark uh, blue circle. That's the person attacking someone. Uh, he has an inner conflict inside. And this conflict is due to the society, to the upbringing, to the family, something uh, deranges him. Uh, the red circle all, uh, around him are the children he communicates with, and some of these children are being attacked by uh, him. And then the light blue circle are other people. Uh, he doesn't attack these people, but he is afraid uh, that he might be attacked by these people. So. For people in the center, for the aggressors, uh, it's important to understand they attack the people around them. Uh, when uh, some hooligans attack uh, a bypasser in the street, this is not bullying. Bullying means this is a premeditated uh, action or activity when um, uh, peers attack another child in, at school. in the group for example so the key idea if we talk about bullying bullying is an attempt to defend uh, from uh, attacks but uh, you know that uh, uh, offense is the best defense and if we perceive bullying as an attempt to defend so if you start uh, perceiving uh, an aggressor as someone who is uh, suffering uh, which makes him attack uh, the others that will help you and that will help the child or the aggressor to stop uh, aggressive or offensive activities unfortunately uh, the uh, cause is most often in, in the family, at home. That's why let's talk about family and let's talk how we parents may provoke our children um, to exhibit this strange behavior with uh, friends or with peers. Uh, there are at least 10 reasons uh, making uh, children bully others but the main idea is to understand that the child is a reflection of the parents because he tries to imitate the parents so 10 triggers which uh, are uh, characteristic for uh, the families uh, where the child might become a bully and when you listen uh, you can write down let's say one and you write a plus or a minus or you write yes we uh, do have that or we don't have that you can assess yourself and then uh, when we finish you will understand what are the chances for your child to face bullying as a victim or as an aggressor so all of these things, they are about the parents. So the first is uh, something we can uh, say as animadversion. When we discuss someone, something, when we, we say about a person that he did something wrong, but we don't go there and we don't change the situation. And it creates a feeling that we, uh, for the child, that we are surrounded by the enemies. And these enemies are much stronger than we are. Uh, it's hard for a child to admit that uh, his or her parents are uh, not able to do something. They simply uh, think that these enemies, these other people are stronger than the parents. Then the other thing is uh, this kind of solemnity or when parents try to uh, look good uh, look right or when they put a, 
in importance to unimportant things when they have this rigid schedule um, when they punish for all, all mistakes and they never let a mistake go they can't uh, forgive uh, the children uh, so very strict very correct people uh, another thing is rudeness i'm not talking about the uh, situation when we talk rudely to uh, Mm, uh, ch to, to a child. No, rudeness meaning using rude ad adjectives like ugly or uh, did something wrong or why did you do that? You know, the worst question you can ask a child and it is a rudeness towards a child. Why? What for? What for did you do that? It, it is consider it as rudeness because uh, people who are younger than 25 years uh, it's hard for them to answer this question what for why because uh, their cortex of the uh, large hemispheres of the brain is still developing uh, rudeness also means uh, uh, abrupt movements uh, like uh, looking uh, abruptly at the child or throwing something at the child or putting roughly a plate on the table uh, or when uh, parents uh, uh, may uh, beat or hit their children then another uh, factor is uh, barbarism when a family doesn't consider uh, itself as a uh, part of the society and puts the, uh, the interests of the family uh, before the interests of the society and they may laugh at uh, weak people etc children will copy this behavior and uh, that's uh, how uh, he becomes a victim or a bully, an aggressor. Uh, next uh, item, complexes of the parents. Meaning that the uh, parents feel uh, uh, very rigid, uh, they don't perceive life as a game, it's forbidden to jump on the sofa and there are no uh, free relations between the children and uh, the parents. Uh, children may suffer from emotional deprivation, uh, which uh, causes them behave in a way that either they are beaten or they are hugged by the uh, parents. And sometimes victif victims provoke uh, being uh, beaten because they want hugs. It may sound weird for those who uh, are not aware of the psychotherapy and psychiatry, but that's the result of sensory deprivation. Uh, the next factor is when there are no borders, when uh, parents are too liberal, discuss too much, don't uh, give any final answers, they always give open opportunities, talk too much with the children. Uh, I don't mean answering the questions, but instead of saying briefly, uh, go to your room and think about your behavior. They explain for a long time with the philosophical ideas. Children are too young for that. And uh, uh, it's hard for the children to understand a lot of words and uh, all this uh, uh, wording and phrasing. And if uh, there are no borders, if there are no strict decisions, then a child cannot rely on the parents. Because if there are no borders, uh, children face a lot of responsibility and children are afraid of their responsibilities. If a child has a lot of responsibilities, well, it, it of course depends on the age, uh, uh, but it's difficult for a child to have too many responsibilities. Next, number seven, no trust in the family. When a child is afraid to tell about, to tell the, his parents about uh, his problems, 
or when he uh, told you that uh, he had broken uh, a plate and he had cut his uh, foot, he comes to you and tells you what happens and you start uh, screaming at him saying, why did you break the plate? Why did you do that? And then afterwards, uh, your child will avoid asking you for help, uh, turning to you for help and you may not even be aware what's going on with the child, uh, what he feels, and something unexpected might happen to him, uh, as it happens to my uh, friend Evgeny, who hung himself. Uh, no control, I mean uh, no direction. When parents fail to give directions and believe that the child will understand uh, on his own, uh, but then the child will simply follow whatever he sees in the advertisement, whatever he sees on Instagram, uh, like uh, how to dance, what to wear, how to behave, and that's the model of their behavior for the uh, for their life. And then we are surprised why children are uh, behaving like this. And the child are often unable to make a choice. And I'm talking, for example, about the situations. It's up to you to decide which uh, university you are going to go. It, this decision can be taken at the age of 25 or later. Before that, well, it's not like it's up to you to decide. You have to help your child choose so that the final answer is given by him, but with your cues, with your help. Uh, the child needs to understand what he wants, but then you have to direct him. But of course, then he will have the uh, feeling that it was his decision. But don't leave your children alone uh, with uh, the decisions to make. Uh, then next is uh, lack of support when you don't explain what happened to the child. When something positive or something negative happens, you don't give any comments. You don't explain the depth. Or you don't explain uh, using your wisdom, your experience. When you don't answer the questions, when you say that he is asking silly questions, when you don't um, give uh, enough information, when you give superficial answers, Answers. It all makes your child think that uh, he doesn't have your support. And of course, later on, children will be afraid to uh, come to, to the parents with the problems because uh, the parents don't help. And the last is the lack of confirmation, I mean, uh, the lack of uh, assertion. Uh, for example, uh, when a child is engaged, is in enthusiastic about something, then uh, he, he needs this positive reward or positive reinforcement. Uh, and by the way, uh, boys and girls, they differ. And in order to create positive uh, uh, opinion of themselves, you need to do different things in case it is a boy or a girl. But we may talk later uh, more about it later on. So if uh, you notice uh, some of these uh, factors in your family, if you have more than three factors in your family, then it actually guarantees that your child uh, has already uh, been in uh, the situation of bullying, either as a bully or a victim. Uh, as far as I understand, your children are aged 10 to 12 approximately, uh, and starting from the age of 10, uh, all these factors make children look for violence uh, in their environment. Uh, of course, it's not up to you to answer these questions. A third person should approach your child and discuss these 10 factors. And then conclusions can be drawn based on the child's answers. Of course, no one wants to think he isn't uh, good or perfect. And if you approach a parent 
and say you don't put borders look your child is completely lost but then the parents may not accept it or may believe uh, mistakenly that they do have put borders for the child so our answers are quite subjective if uh, you want you may uh, switch your children meaning that you approach uh, a different child from uh, the group, uh, a peer of your child, and then uh, his uh, or her parents may approach your child and ask the same questions. If you want to understand what's going on with the child, and if you want to find out how your child perceives uh, his or her family. And let's now talk about school. So what happens at school? How can the school environment uh, uh, push children towards bullying and towards violence? What we need to understand foremost, the modern school, um, I'm not going, I, I, I can't, uh, of course, know how the situation is in your school. Hopefully your school is uh, better than an average school, but an average school is a perfect environment for bullying. Uh, because what is the difference between uh, schools and other locations, other places you can find children? Uh, there is comparison at school meaning that all children attend the same lesson all children for example learn english all children get the same uh, exercises the same tasks they have to do exactly the same thing and they have to give exactly the same answers and they have to get the same good marks and they start comparing them, uh, them with each other, meaning he got a better mark, uh, he got a lower mark, etc. And imagine animals, all animals have strengths uh, and uh, weaknesses. And if we gather uh, animals, different animals, and make them climb a tree, uh, of course an elephant would lose and a monkey would win and then an elephant might be perceived as a loser in this situation uh, and even if an elephant and the monkey were friends before this test they will not remain friends and uh, after a while elephants may uh, create a group and start uh, uh, exercising a revenge uh, against monkeys because monkeys are better than elephants in climbing trees uh, if we believe what is going on at school is something normal uh, that's actually the same situation when different children are assessed based on the same scale uh, when uh, there are the same requirements, it leads to comp uh, competition in the group and it will mm, cause aggressive behavior in people, not only in children. Uh, moreover, unfortunately, there is a philosophy of uh, uh, teaching children uh, to become average, like uh, become like everyone else or maybe even not that but uh, sometimes teachers choose one person one uh, child in the group saying that maria is a, such a bright child you all should be like maria and if you are not like maria not uh, as bright not as clever not as uh, uh, studious then you will be punished uh, it is very hard for children to uh, be themselves, to uh, think in their own way, to try to solve problems in their own ways. And uh, children are unable to choose subjects they want to uh, learn. Maybe they want to dedicate one month to learning mathematics. Maybe they want to dedicate uh, two years to mathematics, but there is no choice. Everyone must, must follow the same curriculum. And of of course it is difficult and of course it leads to psychological problems which may result in bullying in becoming victim of bullying so we can't actually expect 
that uh, uh, different children may learn the same uh, subject uh, in the same way within the same time uh, framework. We are now talking and some of you may understand one part of the presentation, uh, other people may uh, understand uh, another part, but for someone it might be necessary to listen to a presentation three times to, to grasp it fully. We all are different and if we want to get the same results we need different approaches. In most schools, I'm not sure about your school, but in most schools, the approaches are the same and the uh, desirable result is the same. Another thing, another peculiarity of the current educational system is that children on, are in an artificial uh, environment of peers. If we look at the large world, where yeah when, where can you find such a situation if we start uh, comparing our child with uh, he, someone he idolizes it will not depress him for example it might become a, a source of inspiration and if you say uh, he, uh, you can express your ideas uh, as good as Eminem does in his songs. Or, for example, if you knew English a little bit better, you could uh, talk just as Eminem, and your child will not be offended. He will not go and try to hurt Eminem. No, he will believe, I was compared with my idol. I might believe just like, I might, I might become just like him. But if you compare a child with a, uh, another uh, unknown person, he won't care about it because he doesn't know this person, if there is no emotional pressure. But if you start comparing your child with a peer, uh, then it will automatically cause competition and everyone becomes an enemy of other peers if we compare them. If uh, people are compared and believe they might be equal in something, then they start behaving like uh, boxers before the boxing match. If you remember your life, you may not uh, have experienced this environment anywhere else. The only place in the world where there are human beings divided depending on their age. The school is the only environment where there are different rooms with human beings of the same age. I've only seen it in cattle, in farms. That's very convenient in farms because then you can understand uh, who is the next for slaughtering, who should be fed, who should be uh, f given what. That's very uh, good for cattle, for domestic animals. Why is it a system adopted in schools? If we look at the children's psychology, it's actually unclear considering that all children are different. Why are they divided depending on their age, not depending on their similarities? This is an open question, we won't dwell on it, but the reality is that we are surrounded by different people of different age groups, and I'd like to, I'd like to emphasize uh, the more versatile is our environment, the stronger is the team. If we imagine a football team, and uh, this football team consists only of goalkeepers, 11 goalkeepers. They are wonderful goalkeepers, but they don't do anything else. That's a very weak team. Yes, they have one good goalkeeper and then mediocre or poor players. Uh, the more uh, versatile is a team, the better it is, the stronger it is. So we need to understand that. And uh, if a person gets used to being surrounded by the same people, this person will be useless in complicated situations because he won't be able to help anyone. 
meaning that diversity is very important. It makes us stronger as a team. And let's forget about school. I do understand this is a painful topic and I'm not saying we have to change the educational system. That's not the aim. I just want you to understand that uh, this is about the environment. Uh, this environment uh, pushes children towards bullying and towards aggressive behavior. If we look at adults, uh, there is such a phenomenon as mobbing. Uh, people working in offices and call centers may be aware of that. A sales uh, personnel may be aware of that. When uh, colleagues uh, compete and that's why they apply mobbing. Uh, if we look at the call center, all employees uh, have the same function. If one of the managers is too good, most likely a group or even the entire staff will uh, unite against uh, this person because uh, the administration, the management will measure and assess uh, all employees uh, using this best employee as a baseline. And even if the entire team uh, works good, uh, they will suffer nevertheless. So as a group, they will be forced to get rid of the best representative of the best member. If you have worked in this environment, you must understand this. Or let's uh, look at the fashion business. We have a fashion model and this fashion model is surrounded by other girls, uh, makeup artists, hairdressers, photographers, uh, people, hel uh, girls helping her to get dressed, uh, girls of different age groups with different skills, they cooperate. And one of these girls uh, go on a runway and represents the entire teams. And if she wins, there is no jealousy in the team because they are not equal, they do different things. But uh, other fashion models will, will feel jealous because they are direct competitors. They are equal with these winning fashion models. They were assessed as equals. Do you understand what I mean? When we live in a versatile, diverse uh, environment, we can cooperate. When we are on, on the stage among equals and we are assessed uh, based on the same criteria, uh, it causes hostility. And that's why fashion models may hurt each other, etc. The same goes for business competition. When there are competitors, let's say uh, two businessmen, two competitors, uh, competition is not advantageous for them. They can uh, reinforce each other, they can expand the market, the market will become bigger, there will be more money, more customers in the market, they will gain from it. But most of the uh, CEOs uh, don't have this model, they believe competitors are enemies. He is equal. I start comparing myself to my competitor. And it means I have to destroy him. And competition for such uh, people uh, means uh, uh, the need to destroy. And that's how uh, they start this struggle, which is not beneficial. Uh, it's not beneficial for the competitors and it's not beneficial for the market or for the customers. If we return to school, then uh, let's imagine a standard situation. When uh, a teacher says, let's look at this uh, student, he is a wonderful student, he invented something and now you must try to uh, be similar to him. And it means that at the very moment, uh, all the rest will start uh, thinking how to get rid of this person. So this student may become a victim just because he was highlighted by the teacher. I'm not talking about the situation when uh, uh, children uh, face some difficulties. For example, when I was in grade five, my parents got divorced uh, 
And uh, my mom changed her uh, family name and I had to change mine. And uh, somehow teachers believed it was funny. So there were uh, 10 teachers, 90 students, 90 parents. And uh, one of the teachers says, you know, uh, two of our boys changed their surnames this year. Yeah, can you imagine this is the 1st of, this, uh, of September, the main news, uh, two boys had a different surnames. And uh, some of the children started uh, making fun of us, uh, looking at our reaction. Uh, teachers believed it was funny, but uh, they had no idea what it might have uh, entailed. We gave a good uh, positive reaction, we didn't react that much, although in a different situation, in case of a stronger reaction, it might have provoked bullying. And that this approach is also used in the army. Uh, for example, uh, if uh, they need to get rid of a soldier, they uh, wait for his mistake and uh, then the entire group of soldiers is uh, punished because of that mistake and then this soldier becomes a scapegoat. The same uh, happens in, uh, in prisons and then uh, the group after being punished for uh, one person's error, will hate and will bully uh, the uh, guilty person. We are talking about that uh, just to understand that there are certain situations pushing people to make certain steps. I'm not talking about changing the school. If, if you want to influence anything uh, in terms of education, we can discuss it later on, but that's not our main aim today. Our aim today is to enable children through uh, or via their parents uh, to uh, gain immunity to bullying. And if we have several children immune to bullying, then there may be no bullying at all. I'm going to uh, ex use my daughter as an example. We have uh, 15 minutes left uh, top, and then we will have questions. So uh, that's my daughter. Her name is Alina. She's 10 years old. That's my older daughter. And she was born in Moscow, in Russia. And we moved uh, 10 times over these 10 years. We moved in the regions, uh, we moved to uh, neighboring countries uh, because I uh, studied people in different regions. And of course, she followed me, the family. She doesn't attend uh, school. She, uh, of course, she, she doesn't attend one school. I don't uh, think about grades, I don't care about grades, uh, but uh, knowledge is important. Uh, and I want her to learn. And if she doesn't understand something, I explain that to her, not uh, the way it is written in the textbook. I want her to have her own uh, plans, schedules, depending on her needs. And there are different ways of uh, making schedules and plans. And uh, it helps uh, in life uh, later on. Uh, there are different ways how to make schedules. Uh, so I try to uh, uh, help her uh, use things that are convenient for her, for her, uh, for her mind. So a few years ago, we moved to Ukraine. We need live near. Uh, we are living near Kiev right now, and you need to understand that uh, people from Moscow are not uh, in uh, favor in uh, Ukraine. Uh, we are uh, currently residing in a uh, house, uh, and there used to be a residential block of flats, and uh, there used to be a family with uh, children who 
have become uh, very aggressive. They uh, decided uh, to move to Poland. Uh, so changing the environment is one of the ways how to solve the problem. We moved and uh, what I can see that uh, there are no extracurricular, extracurricular activities uh, and uh, children uh, have nothing to do after school but another thing I'd like to mention is that uh, uh, there are uh, people uh, of uh, different uh, means, financial means, uh, like there is uh, next to our house, there is a house, uh, uh, 700 square meters, and uh, on the other side, there is a, a house uh, like uh, 20 square meters or even less. Uh, it's actually positive for a person, for a child, uh, to be able to see uh, children from different families, from with different uh, financial situations. So we uh, are living near Kiev, and normally uh, children don't go outside to play. But my daughter went outside to make friends. Uh, Mostly children uh, use rude language, uh, they um, spend their time uh, breaking something, and it uh, took Alona a few months uh, to uh, um, uh, to teach uh, main players of the street, let's put them that way, uh, they uh, abandoned rude language and uh, no, uh, aggressive behavior is not uh, supported and uh, some of the aggressive leaders, they don't go out any longer because they can't influence the environment any longer. And one of the children, uh, they aren't big enough to uh, smoke or to drink, but uh, still, uh, some children uh, misbehave, but they are uh, behaving in a different way right now. And I believe we are going to expand this uh, positive psychological uh, impact uh, to other neighboring uh, areas. But there is no magic, because each child and each adult wants to be loved, wants to be accepted, wants to be among uh, other uh, people, other children uh, who respect them, share something with them. And if this uh, child or if this person is stronger, uh, then of course they will make friends, they will have a good contact. And there are no problems now. There is no more bullying in our street just because of one person who doesn't care about it. I'm going to give you three ideas how to achieve this in your children so that your children could have the same impact on the environment. There are three steps, no magic. So the first step is uh, to ensure your children are in a mixed age group or team. We've already said that uh, there are no groups of peers in a natural environment and all uh, children, they are in different age groups and it's important. Uh, it means that there must be someone older and someone, someone younger for each child. Uh, if uh, someone who is always the youngest, then uh, he becomes naughty, he makes demands, etc. But if a child is always the oldest one, then it's hard because he can't uh, ask for support or uh, advice. I know that uh, 
many uh, parents are uh, afraid they don't know how to control uh, a child, for example, in uh, cyber sport. But uh, there are normally uh, mixed age uh, cyber sport uh, teams and they start uh, respecting each other. There are, let's call them knights uh, in the teams. And uh, there are also wizards. Knights are stronger and the wizards are uh, weaker and knights can't win without wizards. So this uh, environment ensures that uh, cooperation help, uh, helps them win. And that's why it's not advantages to bully uh, the other children. So it is possible to ensure this normal positive environment even when playing video games. And even if a child uh, wants to bully, he gets a new experience of cooperation and forgets about this need to exhibit, uh, express uh, aggressive behavior. Then uh, the second factor is uh, that a child needs to know about his or her strengths. And he must be aware of his individual strengths. Uh, if he or she understands what are his uh, strengths, he knows uh, what uh, role he can assume, what he can bring to the team. So it's very easy for a child aware of his uh, strengths to uh, become uh, a part of, uh, of the group, to get integrated in a group. And then these children, they also um, uh, don't react in an acute way to any attacks because uh, they have this armor, the uh, awareness of their strengths. It's very hard to traumatize or to insult such a child. And, uh, uh, you know, if uh, a child uh, starts attending a new school, he is going to be tested by all other children. And it will be easier for a child if he or she knows about his strengths. And the third uh, factor is total score. We uh, have some marks at school, but total score is when all uh, marks, all scores are summed up. And then the, uh, it means that uh, the children have to unite and strengthen the team. And it's not enough to have uh, a versatile, a diverse team. Uh, the team also needs a, 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 group, a name, an objective. Uh, children are unable to set goals, to set aims, but they can't copy from Instagram, for example, and you can't find anything good in Insta on Instagram. So it's up to adults to set goals, to uh, accompany uh, the children on this way. So that's an advantage, you, but you have to follow. If someone mm, ensured uh, a result, it means everyone wins. And the common victory is the victory of everyone. And everyone's uh, victory is the common victory. And if they attack each other, they will start losing. Uh, that's the prevention of bullying. Because if they start losing, they get less, uh, less points, less uh, lower marks, and it affects the common result. And now the summary, what we have learned, what we could uh, discuss during this uh, uh, hour. So you uh, can see everything uh, on the screen, four uh, types of participants. There are four types of participants in bullying. Victim, uh, victims become uh, marginals, they don't uh, trust uh, the society, they don't become leaders. Aggressors become uh, average consumers, they can't become professionals, it's very hard for them. They want to uh, look instead of being, and uh, uh, those uh, who are former um, victims turned aggressors, they are depressive, they are not satisfied with themselves, they criticize uh, the other people, and uh, they can't uh, blame themselves, they blame the others. Bullying is not 
profitable or advantageous for anyone because it makes the entire team the entire group weaker if there is bullying in the group uh, then everyone suffers if there is bullying at school uh, it means all students administration teachers all suffer uh, the only person the only one who can stop bullying is the team it means the environment the atmosphere the relations between the participants but uh, it also means that you need a leader that's why i mentioned the example of my daughter a leader may create a core and um, which will uh, uh, help uh, to which will help uh, changes implement changes uh, and then the team will be against uh, aggression and bullies will uh, in order to protect themselves will stop at their attacks and will stop uh, offense and if you want to uh, have a bully then you only need three out of ten factors we discussed uh, and at school if you want to get a bully you have to simply compare children uh, equal children among themselves if uh, a child is uh, given the proper upbringing he won't become a participant of bullying but upbringing or education well in russian this word comes from the word image uh, meaning that a person has to understand uh, his peculiarities or uh, has to know himself. I'm not uh, talking about education or bringing uh, as uh, teaching uh, mathematics or, or anything else. Uh, a bringing or education means that a, uh, a child perceives uh, himself as a part of the society and a child will believe that if his or her parents uh, believe that they are part of the society as well. Uh, then a spectator is necessary for bullying. We haven't mentioned that, but that's one of the participants of uh, the situation of bullying. And a spectator as a team is the one who can stop bullying. If parents uh, try to uh, get engaged and try to stop bullying, it will be even worse for the victim because he will be perceived as a traitor. There will be more aggressors willing to punish the victim. And they, uh, it's, it, it is a very complicated situation. So uh, frequent solutions offered online, they don't work. You now have a, an understanding, a basic understanding, uh, but nevertheless an understanding of bullying. And that's why we can now talk about your questions. If you do want to understand this uh, topic, uh, we need to understand what are the four participants of bullying, of hounding, uh, and we need to understand the psychology of each of the participants. And it will take at least two hours. One hour is not enough, so at least two hours are necessary to un to be able to understand uh, who does what and why in this bullying situation. This is a scientific uh, approach. So uh, I believe it was enough uh, for us uh, to discuss bullying for an hour to understand what bullying is. But then we would need at least eight hours to uh, understand more about each participant. In case you uh, get inspired by this topic, let me know. Now, uh, while we are waiting for your questions, I'm going to uh, answer the questions we already had at the beginning. So how to teach uh, the child to resist? Uh, the answer is there is no need to resist. Even if a child resists, it's not a solution. A child must uh, be the one who uh, doesn't uh, cause the uh, need to bully him. Then uh, the next question, how to teach our kids to deal with bullies. Uh, then are we talking about the victim or about the spectator? Uh, 
How can a victim stop bullying? Uh, that's one question. But if uh, if you are asking about spectators, that's a very good question. But it will take us eight hours to discuss. Uh, question three: How to prevent bullying in the first place? To prevent bullying, we have uh, to uh, achieve that a child uh, is not someone who can be bullied. Then what do you do if you are worried about your child becoming a bully? Uh, if we are the parents, we have to look at these 10 uh, factors, we have to remove at least uh, a few of them. It means self-development for the parents, it means uh, improved relations in the families, and then the child will not want to become a bully. And the next is how to talk uh, to parents, how to support parents if uh, their child is actively involved in uh, bullying. That's a complicated question. Because if uh, someone is uh, uh, behaving in an aggressive way, uh, and if you tell uh, this to the parents, it actually means that there is something wrong with the parents. If uh, a child uh, has this aggressive behavior, it means that the child is uh, a victim uh, in the family. The parents may believe that this is normal for the child, but it's not that. And you must understand that uh, children are different. Uh, some children need a direct answer. Other children perceive a direct answer as a kind of violence. So. Uh, if you are not uh, an expert in psychology, if you are not a psychotherapist, uh, then most likely this situation will uh, and will uh, result in uh, um, hurt. Uh, that's all I wanted to tell you, and we can now uh, take any questions if you have them. Uh, thank you, Alexei, as an organizer. Uh, I would like to take the floor. We haven't received any questions so far. If you have any questions, please uh, write us. Uh, I can ask you a few questions. Uh, first of all, uh, when you answered the questions received before the seminar, uh, you, there was a question how to help uh, your child resist bullying. You mentioned the child should not resist, but uh, the child should not uh, attract the attention of bullies, let's say. Then how can we help the child uh, not to uh, excite interest. It means that uh, the child must be transparent for bullying. When uh, aggression is directed uh, against him, this aggression must go through him. And it means that a child must be aware of his strength. If a child understands that he can dance, for example, and uh, uh, he gets respect because of that, and then someone approaches him and says, your English is poor. But then if a child is successful in something, uh, he will say, yes, my English is poor, but then uh, I can dance. So it, it doesn't hurt. There, there is no way for uh, aggressors to hurt the child. Uh, thank you. Uh, but then these three factors, they refer to all participants of the bullying, to the victim, to the spectators, and to the bully uh, himself. 
if uh, we, if uh, adults, create an environment with uh, all these three factors present in the team, we won't be able to understand what aggression or violence is uh, in the relations between people. Uh, they may uh, get united to uh, to uh, win a competition, for example. It doesn't mean they will become uh, pacifists, in, but to create an environment uh, without uh, self-destruction of the team. What is bullying? Bullying means the destruction of the team. If we uh, let bullying continue, it will destroy the team. First of all, the team will be divided into smaller groups. The smaller groups will become smaller and smaller until the members become individuals. And there is an expression in Russian. Uh, uh, it's not my funeral, it's not my business, it's not my headache, something like that. Uh, so when everyone has this opinion, it's none of my business, then there is no more team left. And bullying is the starting point. Bullying is aggression towards a colleague, towards a partner, uh, uh, towards someone who covers me. And if there is one person with all these uh, factors in the team, uh, even if it is a 10-year-old uh, child who uh, has these uh, necessary uh, features, uh, he can uh, help a team of uh, five, six uh, other children, and then other um, team members can be added. And another question I wanted to ask, uh, uh, there uh, were uh, all these examples about uh, uh, the school, our school is very small and uh, there is a, already a team with no space for bullying, but there are also different schools. Do I understand it? correctly that uh, we can talk about any other teams, groups like uh, children playing in the street or a uh, sports group or any other environment where children meet. And then if uh, we uh, teach our child uh, to, to be transparent for bullying uh, or to stand against or to resist bullying, then this child will be able to uh, uh, avoid bullying or avoid these situations. Yes, you mentioned uh, a very uh, good thing. It is very positive uh, that we are discussing this topic right now. Uh, we've uh, had uh, this topic put forward for discussion because uh, someone is uh, may relate to it and if uh, it wasn't topical for us, we could have believed our child was safe. But then again, our child may face in the future a situation when something happens and he can't resist, he can't be transparent, he doesn't have this experience. So that's very positive when a problem arises. And I'm talking about any problem right now. We find a systemic uh, solution which uh, enables us to prevent other uh, problems. If you don't have bullying in your school, that's positive on one hand. On the other hand, it's not very positive because your children attend other uh, activities, other groups, and there will be bullying most likely. So it's better to make uh, your uh, child transparent or aggression-proof 
let's say, it, it helps if something bad happens and your child is able to cope with that, someone taught him to cope with that, or um, even if uh, the child doesn't understand uh, the problem, uh, he behaves in the correct way. And this normal behavior helps create a normal environment around him. Thank you. Now, uh, one of the participants uh, left the, um, wrote uh, his uh, question in the chat. Oleg is asking to explain in more detail what the total score is. If you allow, I will ask this question in uh, Russian. Uh, thank you, Alexei, uh, for uh, a very meaningful lecture. Of course, we didn't have much uh, time uh, to discuss it uh, more in uh, detail, but uh, I'd like to ask you about this uh, total score, one of these three uh, pieces of advice you give at the end uh, to ensure that a group of children have uh, common uh, achievements. How can we set these uh, goals? You mentioned this example and we are very aware of this uh, uh, example, teachers who uh, point out uh, the students lagging behind. Uh, that's a great uh, way how a team can get rid of the weaker, uh, of the weaker member. Uh, and if there is a total score, then a team might be interested in getting rid of the weakest members. Uh, yes, thank you for the question. Uh, a total score is when uh, any achievement of any member is a contribution. For example, we have 10 uh, uh, children in a group. We have a competition between groups and they all collect points, all of them. Even in this model, uh, there is this uh, integrity inside each group. And it's very important not to have a negative, a low score or a low point. If someone, for example, gets uh, five uh, uh, marks, two, it means that he got uh, 10 in the result. And if we return to the uh, first question you asked, how to set these goals, it must be a joint, a common goal, a common aim. And there must be one single indicator of the achievement. Uh, children normally uh, create it in a game, but uh, that's not very long lasting. Uh, they play for a while and then they switch to something different a few hours later. Uh, so we need a common goal. Let's take the family. It's uh, easier, maybe. Uh, for example, we all gather and we uh, suggest a common goal, for example, to go uh, to a park for a walk. And in order to get there, in order to um, achieve the goal, we have to collect points. We have to have a certain score. For example, uh, you care about cleanliness and tidiness in your family at home. Uh, it means that children have to clean, uh, to make their room tidy, etc. So let's say uh, tidiness is the uh, aim. And if we uh, revise everything um, in uh, in our house, in our apartment, uh, in the evening, and if everything is clean and tidy, then it's five points. And we have we will go to the park when we get five uh, thirty-five uh, scores. And if something is not clean and tidy, we don't attack each other, we don't blame each other, we simply get two points instead of five points. So the question is when it will happen. It is a kind of game, it is a bit artificial, but that's a game that trains people, uh, trains children uh, to live and prepares them for the for life. Uh, 
so uh, you can reach your goal. The question is, uh, when will you reach it? For example, uh, someone can buy uh, an apartment, but the question is, when will he buy this uh, apartment? So you have to focus on the speed and on the quality of uh, uh, these uh, achievements of the contributions. So this concerns the uh, refers to the school, to sports groups, and to the family as well. So we all need to uh, strive for a total score. And uh, for example, we can uh, buy seven cars a year, but then if we have a good total score, we can get uh, 12 cars and everyone wants to get these 12 cars. Thank you very much. I do understand that it's not that easy to find a common goal that will prevent uh, getting rid of outsiders from the group. We will still have to think about it. Thank you so much. Yes, let me summarize. Uh, to prevent uh, getting rid of outsiders, it's quite easy. Stop comparing equals. It means don't expect the same things from everyone. Don't have the same expectations for everyone. It's, it's not very reasonable. We don't expect the same things from husband, wife and children. We all are different. We have our own peculiarities, our own features and our own responsibilities. Thank you. There was another question before that if uh, the author has a YouTube channel. Uh, I do kind of have a YouTube channel, but not for the moment, next year. On YouTube, I'm thinking about uh, talking uh, on uh, global issues. Pulling is uh, not a global issue. So, yeah, maybe if we can meet in a few months, I will be able to give you uh, my YouTube channel or Ksenia will uh, inform you about the YouTube channel. Uh, let me explain why I explain that, why I tell that. A YouTube channel means an, a disadvantage when you get a lot of videos you don't do anything. We now invested our time in one topic. We got three simple steps. And if you choose at least one of these steps, that will uh, help. If it was uh, a video on YouTube, you would have already switched to watch uh, kitten videos or news or anything else. May I ask a question? Uh, first of all, thank you for the uh, material. It was very useful and uh, for my wife and I, this is something we've already experienced. We've attended uh, state school and now we are attending the school where there is a completely different situation with bullying. I wanted to specify something. When you talked about the atmosphere or the environment at home, you mentioned the question uh, the parents ask why, what for? And you mentioned uh, it uh, as a question that uh, humiliates uh, a human being or a child. As far as I can understand, I uh, would like to disagree. And if a child has a well-developed cognitive uh, thinking and uh, has good logic uh, skills, isn't it a question that will uh, serve as a hook uh, and will help uh, develop a topic, or will push the child to develop uh, logical thinking? Why I'm saying that uh, we have mixed marriage and uh, my son uh, has been fluent in several uh, languages um, and uh, he has good logic skills. And these questions uh, helped uh, 
deliberations and uh, discussions with uh, uh, with our son. So th that's why I can't com agree with your opinion. Can you explain? Yes, uh, if we talk about the question why, what for, uh, we uh, were discussing this question in when talking about rudeness, rude attitude. For example, when a, a child uh, misbehaved, did something wrong, uh, when a parent asks this question, what for did you make this mistake? And maybe it wasn't done on purpose. Uh, and of course, this question does help to develop logic. And uh, he, the child perceives this uh, question as if it was done on purpose to uh, hurt uh, his or her parents. And when he hears this question, what for did you do that? Why did you do that? He perceives himself as an enemy uh, to uh, the parents. But uh, then if you ask this question, what for, uh, in order to uh, discuss something, for example, uh, uh, what for is it done when we plan the next step? Then it's very useful. It's, uh, it's useful to discuss this question, but it's hard for the, for the child to give uh, an answer, especially if they did something wrong. So if we summarize, then all these answers to the questions, uh, to, the, uh, to the question why, question why did you do that? The answer is to become happy. That's why I did that. Uh, why does someone abuse alcohol or drugs? To, uh, ex to feel what he perceived to be happiness. It's uh, hard for children to, to think, so we, uh, children need to have uh, uh, associations and uh, need to understand. But if you use this question to develop logic, uh, logical thinking, of course you, you should use it. And it's very important to answer when children ask, why did you do that? And if you did something occasion on not on purpose, without thinking, then you should explain that uh, you uh, did that not for something, but because of. For example, I was rude with you, not uh, for something, but because. I was in a full mood, I wasn't able to control myself, uh, forgive me, I said that. Thank you. Alexei, I think we got a very uh, good question. And there might be a difference between English and uh, Russian. And there are uh, two types of uh, uh, questions in Russian. And in English, uh, they can be translated as why and for what reason. Uh, so what for, for, for what reason? And uh, uh, when uh, someone is asked uh, for what reason, then that's the, it means that's the reason of, of what is going on. And the question why uh, is meant for those who are the uh, consequences. Something is going on, but it happens to you, you can't uh, influence it. So why is about consequences and what for is a different question. When a person asks uh, a question, why, why did you park here? Because I don't know how to park, because I wasn't thinking about the others. Uh, so that's an attempt. That's an attempt of self-justification. And uh, if you ask uh, for what reason did you park it here, it means that there was this premeditation. 
there was this uh, plan. And that's the difference between these questions. Mm. Uh, I don't know how to explain the difference. Uh, uh, Diana suggested in the chat, uh, in the chat, why and what for, so that you could uh, explain this difference, and you can uh, feel the difference between these words. There is a very good example. Uh, sometimes a spouse may ask, "Why do you?" love me but there is no answer to this question and if there is an answer it means that there is no love uh, and the answer to the question about love what for for what reason do you love me or for what reason when you act on this love the only question to the answer why uh, or what, uh, for uh, is to uh, come closer to the idea of happiness I have in my mind. Uh, what for? But if I answer to the question, it, why do I love, for example, because I like you? Well, it means that I am in an unconscious position and I'm being manipulated, uh, I'm unable to control. But it means as soon as I start controlling myself, I will change my attitude because it's not my personal choice. But if that's my personal choice, I am here to make you happy. So I will be happier as well. So that's the uh, question, what for? Thank you for explaining. Yeah, I mm, started confusing this uh, what, uh, why and what for. Um, I started thinking because I need to get something from the person. Thank you, Alexei. We don't have any more questions in the chat. And it's been almost two hours. Now, uh, I do hope that this presentation, this uh, seminar was useful for the participants. I uh, learned a lot of new things today. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the uh, practical uh, advice and for the practical understanding of uh, bullying. That's uh, very important and I'm, I'm sure it will help us, it will help our ch children prevent these situations in the teams, in the groups, our children participate. Uh, I um, am used to uh, end uh, seminars and workshops with practical tasks because after a conversation people may think they understood each other but then due to some situations circumstances uh, it's hard to return to that but then if we have an agreement at the end of the conversation and even if uh, people promise to themselves to do something uh, to act uh, and use this knowledge then it is uh, usually and uh, usually more useful Useful. So I'd like to recommend uh, you as an organizer, don't let uh, people leave before uh, everyone writes on a piece of paper what he or she will change after this conversation. And if you have this promise, if you have this even plan of action, uh, then you can leave this workshop and start acting in the real life. Uh, thank you, Alexei. I, I do understand that very well. That's not my first seminar with you. Thank you. I will send this question to our participants. And I am quite certain that everyone will uh, think it over and we'll make a decision what to do or what not to do. At least 
maybe we'll stop and think it over. Uh, we can see a message in the chat that uh, parents should start uh, by changing themselves. That's a very correct uh, uh, conclusion. Hopefully, this was a comment from a parent, not from a teacher or uh, the school director. It was a parent. Yes, we need to change ourselves. And the uh, problem of uh, bullying among children, uh, the source of this problem, the reason of this problem is not the children. Uh, that's the problem of the adults uh, uh, children see. And self-destruction is not beneficial, is not adv and advantageous for uh, the person. And self-destruction of a team is not uh, good for the uh, team. So it's not um, necessary, it's not advantageous, but it's there because we lack something. And today I tried to show what we may lack. Mm. It's necessary to uh, add the lacking things in your life and there will be no bullying anywhere close to you. That was very optimistic, that sounded very optimistic. Uh, and I probably wouldn't have believed if I didn't know the results of uh, work with you. Uh, 